how chronic insomnia evolves. Hello, I am Dr. Naras Bhatt from uh, doctorsofinsomnia.com. And I am Nipun Bandari, research student with Dr. Naras Bhatt. The overview of the presentation is the problem of acute insomnia and chronic insomnia. And acute insomnia has a predisposing and a per precipitating factors. The solution to acute insomnia for short term is sleeping pills. Whereas chronic insomnia has a life of its own. It has a perpetuating factors. The only effective treatment for chronic insomnia is cognitive behavioral therapy. We will be using Spielman and Morin models to explain it. Spielman model. Dr. Spielman is a sleep expert and professor at Weill Cornell Medical School in New York. He constructed the model of a three P's of insomnia development. Predisposition, precipitation, and perpetuation. The nature of insomnia over time has per perpetuating, precipitating, and predisposing factors. The predisposing factors are, the which we'll explain factors. later, right? Yeah, premorbid mm -hmm. factors. And then you have an acute event, like acute stress. Early in the course of insomnia, there is a little bit of a perpetuating factor. Later, the insomnia has its own life and perpetuating factors to continue your problem of insomnia. So what are the predisposing factors? The predisposing factors include cognitive hyperarousal, physiological hyperarousal, emotional emot reactivity, and your feel best rhythm based on whether you are an owl or lark. In fact, if you are an extreme of an owl or a lark, right? Now, what are the precipitating events? The precipitating events are family conflicts, work-related stress, health issues, and for example, the death of a loved one. In fact, the stress of any kind, right? So what are the perpetuating behaviors? Getting into bed early, staying in bed late, spending extra time in bed, and napping. It, napping. These are the situations in which you try to compensate for your sleep loss by being more uh, uh, closer to sleep circumstances. The other perpetuating behaviors include consuming caffeine, using sleep medications, drinking alcohol or abusing drugs, and worrying about sleep. Okay, the CBT or Cognitive Behavioral Therapy for Insomnia is? What changes the beliefs and behaviors related to insomnia. And that is called Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. There is a three-pronged approach to CBT. It includes sleep restriction, stimulus control, and sleep hygiene. So why sleep restriction? Sleep restriction addresses the primary perpetuating factor. And it uh, looks at the mismatch between the sleep opportunity or total time in bed and sleep ability that is the total sleep time. And that is explained here. The perpetuating factors are continued when you have such behaviors. Okay, so why stimulus control? Stimulus control addresses the perpetuating factor of the mismatch between the stimulus, bedroom and bedtime, and the response, the sleep versus wakefulness. And that again, it continues the perpetuating factors and uh, insomnia has its own life. So why sleep hygiene? Sleep hygiene provides self-help corrective measures of sleep incompatible behaviors and bedroom conditions. Once again, it perpetu perpetuates your insomnia behavior. So Dr. Morin's model. Dr. Charles Morin is a Canadian research professor and sleep expert. He has developed a model showing the vicious circle of persistent insomnia. And uh, let's go through this model. It is a cycle or circle, you know, and uh, first there is insomnia, you know, which is a perpetuation of your acute insomnia. And that leads to dysfunctional cognitions such as worry over sleep loss, rumination over consequences, and unrealistic expectations. And maladaptive habits such as excessive time in bed, irregular sleep schedule, daytime napping, and sleep incompatible activities. And it leads to consequences such as mood disturbances, fatigue, performance impairments, and social discomfort. 
and all of these lead to body arousal and mind arousal. Contributing to emotional, cognitive, and physiologic arousal. And this is what is called the Dr. Morin's uh, Persistent Circle of insomnia. insomnia. So some of the dysfunctional beliefs about sleep, let's visit them. Casual attributions like I believe insomnia is caused by a chemical imbalance. Perceived consequences. When I feel irritable or depressed during the day, it is because I did not sleep well the night before. And sleep requirement expectations. I need eight hours of sleep to feel refreshed and function well during the day. And control and predictability of sleep. I am worried that I may lose control over my abilities to sleep. Beliefs about sleep promoting practices. When I have trouble getting to sleep, I should stay in bed and try harder. So, there is a condition called insomnia brain. That means your brain, insomnia brain is uh, overactive or uh, it's hot. It, 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 it does not allow you to go to sleep. Right. The arousal systems in insomnia subjects do not deactivate from waking to sleep. That's right. And that is explained in this uh, model here. Your insomnia brain has very fast brain waves. And that leads to a classical conditioning of wakefulness with bedroom. And the golden, the, but the golden rule of uh, learning that we have about sleep from our parents is if you get a better good night's sleep, you have a big day tomorrow. And that belief itself leads you to sleeplessness and worry in the bedroom, thinking that I am inadequate, I am not able to sleep. Now, on, let's look at the physiological arousal. So, um, insomnia brain can also cause a uh, feature known as insomnia body, where your heart rate, your body temperature, and the adrenaline increase. And that leads to more worry and more sleeplessness. 